So whilst we have these platforms now moving and we're able to independently control their movement speed and their locations, we can make some modifications to this code um, that will allow us to move them to more than one or two points, like we currently have them set up with these two variables that we can position. But what if you want a platform that moves to three different places or four different places or 500 different places? Well, in order to do that, linking up each of those new movement points individually like with their own specific variable like this is going to be extremely uh, arduous. It would be difficult. In fact, if you wanted it to be different for every platform, you wouldn't be able to hard code it like this. We need to make use of a basic form of automation called a loop. A loop is a single piece of code which will work its way through a list of objects and do a task or a series of tasks to each object in that list. So I'm going to delete everything that we have in the middle here. I'm going to leave the set duration node as it was because that we're not going to change. I'm just going to move it out of the way for now. And I'm going to make some changes to our start position and end position variables. Since we're going to set up an array of variables instead of having each one specifically listed and named. So I'm going to delete this end position here just by highlighting it and pressing delete on the keyboard or you can highlight it right mouse button and select, select delete from the list here. I'm going to rename the start position. You can do that either in the variables list here by right clicking and renaming. You can double click on the name to rename it here in situ or over in the details panel you can adjust the detail name here and I'm going to call this position array. Underneath here we have the variable type vector. That's going to remain unchanged, but next to it you have this little drop down which changes the type that this variable is stored as. Currently we have a singleton. This variable or vector called position array only holds a single piece of information, a single vector. If you want to switch this to an array, you select the grid labeled array here, and that will change a number of things. This will be the grid will be displayed to indicate that this variable is now an array and when you are getting this array in order to get information from it there are all sorts of different ways that you can interact with getting the array and getting information from it so arrays are a little bit different but for our purposes they're extremely useful because they can contain uh, a variable number of pieces of information so this array here currently has no default value, no array elements in it, and I can just keep clicking this plus button to add m as many different array elements as I want to it. We've already used arrays when we tested the interp2 movement component um, using its uh, default control points system here in the details panel. If you see, if I keep, keep pressing the plus button to add elements, this is an array of control point elements. Uh, arrays are simply a list of variables that all share the same type in this case, so these are all control points which happen to also be vectors, which is why what we're going to do is going to work. And you'll see the one uh, thing if you're not used to coding is that array is start from the number zero. The first array index is not one, it is zero. So whilst there are six elements in this array, they start from zero and go to five. Something to watch out for. So I'm just going to clear that list here and go back to my position array that we just created. I want to leave it as an instance editable so that each platform can have its own list of points. And I want to make sure I show the 3D widget so that we can place them down in the world and position them like we did in the last episode. So the loop that I mentioned earlier is going to work its way through this array and it will duplicate that code that we created before to add these control points to the array. The loop that we want here is called a for each loop. What all that means is the name is that for each object in the array it will do a specific task or series of tasks. If I plug the position array into the for each loop and hook that up, for every element in this array this loop will carry out whatever task we connect to the loop body pin, remembering you followed the executionable line in from left to right. And once it has done that for every element of the array, it will then run whatever code you put out after the completed node at the bottom. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to get a reference to the interp2 movement, and I'm going to add control point position. 
same code we used before, only instead of a specific named vector, the start position and end position that we used before, I'm going to take the array element from the loop body, plug that into the position, and hook up the loop body to the add control point position script. So, if there are only two elements in this position array, this code will run twice. If there are 15, this will go 15 times. It will loop through however many elements there are in this array, and it will carry out whatever code we connect to the loop body. And once that's done, I'm going to hook up the duration node at the end to run off of the completed node. So this is the loop body, and then this code will run once completed. I hope that that helps uh, loops make sense. So uh, let's test it. Oh, sorry, I need a target for the duration, which is going to be the interp2 movement component. You can copy and paste any of the nodes on this grid as you would text in any other document. So with this um, platform placed here into the world, oh, I, <laughs> I set a load of position elements in the array when I was showing you that you can add elements to the array. I just want to clear that so that by default, this default value is zero array elements. I'm just going to recompile that. So this platform now has none of those visible 3D widgets. And if I want to add one, I can go down to its details panel, select the positional array. That's the variable that we just created, that uh, array of vectors. Click the plus icon and it will add array position zero, which has its own 3D widget there. You can either select the widget and move it around in the world to position your first array element, or you can go into the details panel here and you can adjust the X, Y and Z positions of these elements by entering whatever values you'd like or clicking and dragging as I'm doing right now to slide the array element around. I'm going to leave array element where it is, uh, array element zero where it is for the start position. I'm going to add in index one, which is going to be our first position. I'm going to set that to 400 up in the air. And then I want to add a third array element, and this is going to be 400 in the z-axis and 400 in the x-axis. So this platform should move straight up, then it will move forwards to array position 2, and then it will ping-pong backwards because we have the interp2 movements behavior type set to ping-pong. So let's test that. Up, forwards, back, up, forwards, back. This platform now has two control positions. If I want to add another one, I just click the position array icon here in the editor. And this one, I'm going to put it uh, 400 up, 400 forwards, and 400 to the uh, right. Now, let's make that negative. Let's make it go left. Minus 400. Up, forwards, left. Up, forwards, left. And you can keep adding as many control points as you want. This can be really useful to add simple moving objects to your levels, such as traffic to roads because you can just set the control points to follow the roads on your level, and then once you press play, the cars will automatically drive around following the control points. The more of these control points you add and the further your platform moves, though, the more careful you're going to have to be with the duration. It will always try and move through all of these arrays in the duration that you've set. So currently it's trying to move through four control positions in one second, so it's going really quite fast. If I want to slow that down to a more usable speed, something like 8 seconds, now I have a platform that I can actually work with. But again, we can do all of that from the editor using instance exposed variables, and we can change them for every single one of these platforms that we put in. This platform over here has no positional elements. So if I add in a few, and... give this one its own movement time, 10 seconds, let's say. So that one moves very, very slowly through its three control points. The first platform is moving quite slowly through four control points. And it doesn't matter how many control points you add or in what positions you add them, each one will then automatically cycle through that loop 
will work its way through all of the positions that you add in the editor. It will add them to the interp2 movement components body, and it will then uh, set whatever custom duration you want. And this allows you to create as complex a platform as you would desire.